In this daily drop, we're going to be talking about D65 or Daylight White Point and why understanding it might be important for your productions. So let's go. All right, everyone, here we are with Wednesday's episode for the week. And I'm doing what I normally do here in the barn, which is mucking about and trying to figure out educational content that will help you in your productions. So first of all, I want to let you know this might be a little inception-y, and when it comes to color temperatures and things like that, you're just going to have to go with it in this episode because there is a point to all of this. Now, one of the tools that I do use on a semi-regular basis is a color meter. This one is the C800 from Sekonic. It's kind of the de facto meter. And one of the things that was a big upgrade when they came out with this meter was its ability to read not only things like daylight and quartz halogen, regular tungsten type units, but also to really be able to read things like modern LEDs. And if you've ever gone to newshooter.com, Mr. Allard, Matt Allard, uh, uses one of these meters all of the time when he does his War and Peace Dr. Zhivago amazing reviews of light fixtures. And it's really how he can break so many of the things down that he does. But for me, I'm a simpleton. And the reason that I use it is so I can get a sense of what color temperature my fixtures are, whether or not they're skewing a little green, a little magenta, make adjustments to that, which is why it's great in modern LEDs if they fixtures, if they have that feature where you can go plus minus green. But I digress. Today's episode is really more about the fact that we shoot a lot of content nowadays that has screens in the actual episodes or the narrative or the documentary or whatever it is, a promotional, educational video that you're doing. So we're seeing screens and they're not always fixed like this one is. They're moving around or the camera's moving around. So it's hard to track it and color correct it. And the thing to understand is that with almost all of these devices in their default settings, the white point is something called D65 or daylight white point, which is 6,500 Kelvin, which is very different than the two color temperatures or color temperature ranges we're normally shooting in, which is around 3,200 Kelvin and around 5,600 Kelvin. Sometimes we'll do a split, 43, 4,400 Kelvin. But if you're in a controlled environment especially, it's really important to understand that you have a cooler base color temperature for these devices. Now, you can go into menus for things like smartphones and tablets, and you can change their ambient settings. And in fact, one of the first things I would recommend that you do in production is turn all of that stuff off. Because those night modes, which are warmer, might be advantageous if you can dial them in to be and match a warmer color temperature. And speaking of color temperature, right now what I have is I have the A7C2 over here set to just 3200 Kelvin. I have the FX30, which is pointing down at the table here, set to 3200 Kelvin. And then these are all set to their base white points. So this is with the color meter. The, the iPad is actually not reading at around 6,500 Kelvin. It's actually reading closer to 68, 6,900 Kelvin. This device, the small HD, is reading at about 66. It's really closer to 6,700 Kelvin. So you can see it's a big jump from where I am right now at 3,200 Kelvin. And while I might make some slight adjustments for how warm or how cool my skin tone is by going up or down a few hundred Kelvin, in terms of where white is reading right now, it's probably not where you want it to be. So my recommendation would be to at the minimum, when you have screens that are set to a base D65 white point, at a minimum, set your camera to a daylight color temperature. So around 5,600 Kelvin, 6,000 would be a little bit better. And oftentimes when I'm outside and I'm shooting, we'll actually set our cameras to 6,000 instead of 5,600 Kelvin. It kind of warms up skin tones a little bit. And while the white balance might be just slightly off, it's a nice look. 
And of course, if you're using a tablet like this, or you're using a smartphone, then you'll be closer to that base D65 white point. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna dip to black. I'm gonna change the color temperature of this camera and this camera to 6,000 Kelvin. I'll come back up and we can take a look at that. And really you can see how there might be a slight change here in terms of how the cameras are reading the whites. Now these two are never gonna match perfectly either. This is just a, you know, a chip chart for a color reference and for basically white to gray to black references. But Again, this is normally at around 6,900 Kelvin, at least per the C800. Um, this closer to 6,700 Kelvin. I'll set the cameras to 6,000. I think that'll be getting us closer, a lot closer to where we are right now or from where we are right now at 3,200 Kelvin. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, here we are. And I have now set the... A and B cameras to 6,000 Kelvin. Nothing else is, oh, wait a minute. You're wondering why does everything look so messed up? Well, the reason is because the other thing that you're gonna obviously have to change in this situation, unless you're outside and you're using daylight or using daylight as your main source, is your actual light fixture. And I don't really have anything going on in this space right now besides the main key light, which is the EPOS 300 through an Octa 3, no backlights, no kickers, just the background light in the space. And of course, there's a little bit of ambient light coming off of this monitor. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna dial this key light into that same 6,000 Kelvin. Of course, you could adjust later on if you needed to, to make changes to make it a little warmer or cooler. Let's click OK. Boom, and there you go. So we should be a lot closer now to whites reading as whites based on the white point of the monitor, the tablet, and things like smartphones, if you're not going in and making changes to those ambient modes, those night modes and things like that. The other thing is when you're watching this content right now, if you're watching it on your phone, your tablet, uh, laptop, whatever it is, go and check your display settings and make sure there aren't any weird ambient modes changing there as well, because you'll want to make sure your device is set to that base D65 or daylight white point to see this accurately. I hope that helps. Most of you probably knew about this, but you know, just in case, that's what the channel's here for. Don't forget to, and to, and I'll see you on the next episode of The Daily Drop.